Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily or at mhughesart on Instagram, TikTok, and here on YouTube. Today we're going to be doing something super fun. We're going to be sketching some dogs in my sketchbook. So grab your sketchbook, maybe a nice warm beverage, and let's get into it. Okay, so I love dogs. I love sketching dogs. I have a dog. So this video was super fun to film. Here are a few dog sketches I have done already in my sketchbook. Not all of them though, because I have to save some mystery and intrigue for the future sketchbook tour video. Yeah, let's get started. I think I'm gonna start with this guy. And the plan is to fill this whole spread with dogs, but we'll see how far we get. I've also got some of my cold erase pencils. Uh, which are basically just erasable colored pencils that I really enjoy sketching with. I've really been liking this purple one recently. But I might go with my classic blue one. So I don't want to go too big because I want to be able to fit quite a few in here. And I'm going to try and be not super precious with them, not take too long. Yeah, a few people have been suggesting this video for a while. I've had a lot of videos planned, um, so I'm trying to get to everything eventually. Okay, so for most dogs, you can start with a circle and then build the snout. So this is a side profile, which I think is really interesting. And you can really decide whether you want to stylize your dog portraits or if you want to go for something more realistic. It's really up to you. Sometimes I like to exaggerate their features. So this dog, I think it might be, I think it's a long-haired greyhound. Um, so they have very long pointy snouts. So it can be fun to you know, exaggerate that feature of theirs. Something I like to do with Coleray's pencils is soften it with a tissue. And that really allows me to build up in the places of the drawing that I want to and let any unwanted information sort of take a back seat. So the cool thing about when you are wiping down the colorase is that it really softens it and it sort of spreads the color out and that allows you to lift up certain areas with a eraser and then you can go back in with the pencil and I really like to cut across the form when I am drawing or painting. So I really try and think about the direction of my pencil. So if I feel like the image is getting lost or I'm losing sight of, you know, the my goal for the sketch, I will introduce a second color with the Colorace pencils and I don't know, it just does something with the brain where you you don't get lost in all of those messy marks that you made before with the other color. Your brain is able to not get distracted and just focus on that new color you're using. This is where you can start to have fun with directional lines and creating visual interest with shapes and you can start to look less at the reference and think about aesthetic choices rather than trying to copy the reference perfectly. Okay, 
So I'm gonna try and finish this one and get to the next sketch. I feel like the first is usually the the one you struggle the most with, at least for me. So I think that last sort of rub with the tissue is probably the last one I'm gonna do. Uh, so now I'm just going to focus on bringing in the shapes that I think are the most important. With each layer of the sketch, I've sort of been collecting visual information, data, if you will. <laughs> and uh, as you go along the way, you kind of realize which information is necessary and which can be left behind. So I'm not copying the photo to a T. I'm just trying to study the animal and get an interesting drawing out of it, hopefully. So it's kind of hard to distinguish the ear in this reference. So I'm leaving it pretty vague in the drawing as well. So the reason I rubbed that area out is because I was getting too many repetitive shapes in this area and I don't think it's super visually interesting to see repetitive shapes. Another example is up here how there's like three little hairs. I don't like that too much. Okay, there's the first dog sketch done. Okay, so I think we're gonna do dog number two right here. And I think I'm gonna do this, this little guy. So I'm trying to think if I should use a different color or stick to the same color scheme. I think I might change it up and use this vermilion colorized pencil and maybe this carmine. Yeah, I think I'm going to use this carmine red one. Okay, so this guy has a very square shaped head and he has a flatter face which is nice to change it up from the long snout. I think it's fun to draw all different types of dogs because they come in so many different shapes. I'm realizing that I might only be able to fill one page, not both pages. But I think it would just be way too long of a video, especially if I want to keep in these real-time talking clips. So maybe I'll do two parts. So these Coleraise pencils I've been using for years. I just recently bought a new pack of them because uh, all of mine were getting very short. Some of them were completely used up and I actually never had the purple Coleraise pencil and I didn't know it existed. So I was really excited when I saw that because I've been really liking purples recently. This guy's very cute and he has a very expressive face. So I'm hoping I can capture that. And I don't mind if I exaggerate his features a little bit. I think for this guy, I just want to do sort of a floating head.
let me know down below if you have a dog. <laughs> I'd love to hear about it. Or a cat or any animal. I think I want to do a cat version of this video, like sketching different cats. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that. do a two-toned thing with this as well. Maybe I will go in with that purple again so that there's continuity. Okay, I might do the rest of this drawing in a time lapse just so that the video isn't too long, but I'll definitely jump in if there's anything important to say. So this video was very much inspired by the artist Quick Dogs on Instagram. He was posting a daily drawing of a dog every day for I don't know how long he was doing it, but, uh, but yeah, if you like dog drawings, I definitely recommend you check him out. I had so much fun drawing this guy. I think he ended up being my favorite. You can see me going back in with this red pencil and I'm just really enjoying making interesting shapes. I really loved the speckly skin he or she has around their mouth. Very cute and also very fun to draw. Okay, so I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. I think he looks really cute. And I think we got some really fun shapes in there. I felt like I definitely warmed up after the first sketch and it just went a lot smoother, I think, this one. So let's move on to dog number three. And as you can see, there's not much space here. So I think I'm going to do a full body kind of small full body here. I have this photo from my Pinterest board and I actually flipped it. So this is the original because I think that will fit nicely in here, hopefully. I think I'm gonna use this, uh, this blue guy again. So I'm kind of glad I did two heads, two dog heads before doing a body. I feel like I've warmed up and uh, it might be a little easier this time around. So just trying to get this dog's shapes down. I'm trying not to smudge this drawing while I do it. <laughs> it's looking pretty horse-like. I think I've made his body a little too long. My dog, Luna, is patiently waiting to my left 
uh, she's looking at me right now, is getting close to her, to a certain time of day. I'm not gonna say the word. She's got a really good internal clock. <laughs> so she is really looking forward to that. So hopefully I can do this one relatively quickly so we don't have a angry puppy on our hands. I really hope this real-time talking style works out okay. Um, I'm very new to it. The only video I've done like this was uh, my sketchbook tour. But let me know if you like this style of video because if this works then I can do more sketch with me videos where I talk real time as I sketch. I don't know if I will be able to do this with painting. I feel like my brain is just too focused when I'm painting to be able to talk it through at the same time and that's why I usually do voiceovers but I'm pretty confident in my drawing ability. I think I've been practicing drawing for so long. I've been keeping sketchbooks for so long that, I don't know, it's a little bit, I'm a little more confident in my drawing abilities than my painting abilities. Even though I would consider myself a painter, or at least up until recently, I considered myself an oil painter. That was, that was it. That was my thing. I just wanted to spend my days making oil paintings. But since starting this channel, I've really opened my mind <laughs> to using different mediums and having a little more fun and not taking art too seriously. Not that there's a problem with that. It just seems like that might not be my path. But yeah, I'd love to have this YouTube thing be a income source for me. Maybe not the main one, or maybe maybe it will be the main one, who knows? That would be really cool. But it would be cool to, I guess, have this channel as an income source and then have maybe, you know, sales of paintings as another income source. I thought about maybe doing online classes someday. I think that would be really fun. I think I've always liked the idea of teaching art to people. Yeah, maybe one day I'll work on a class or something like that. Maybe I will open a Patreon someday. Who knows? I always end up doing this where I uh, have to squish something into a little area of a page, but that's okay. It's kind of a little challenge. Okay, let's do our first wipe. <laughs> so I will always have a Kleenex like this in my pencil case, my big, my big pencil case right here. I really like this pencil case because it sits open on my desk like a big bucket of stuff <laughs> but I always have tissues in my pencil case which probably looks really gross but uh, yeah I use them again and again because I don't want to be wasteful I do love sketching in um, graphite pencil but there is something so much fun about sketching in color I don't like the direction I chose for this part. I like to really pay attention to the direction I go in. So I would rather go this way for this part, I think. I think that might be a little better. 
And that's not the most important thing when you're starting out uh, learning to draw. You really just want to get the, the shapes down. But if you want to maybe level up your drawings, then that is something to consider. I know when I started considering direction of shading and even in my paintings direction of brush strokes, that's when I noticed like a little bit of a level up in my work. But it's also a style thing, right? So it's, there are no rules. So for me, directionally, I like to go cut across the form usually. So for example, for something like this leg, when I'm shading this little shadow bit, instead of shading in this direction of the leg, I like to shade in this direction, so little strokes like that. And I will go in this direction to get, you know, lines in of my shapes, the lines of my shapes in, I should say. But for shading, I like to cut across. And you'll notice that in drawings that the masters have done, um, if you've seen Leonardo da Vinci's sketches or Michelangelo, they cut across the form like that. Okay, so I think I'm going to time lapse the rest of this guy too. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. And who knows, maybe I'll, I probably will pop in with a voiceover to say goodbye. Okay, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. You can feel free to let me know down below if you liked how the spread turned out. And let me know if you'd like me to do a part two where I fill the other sketchbook page to the right with some more dogs. I think that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a like. If you want to see when I post next, feel free to subscribe. Uh, if you want to become a art friend, a member, you can hit the little join button down below. It's 99 cents a month uh, and it's like a little, little tip jar <laughs> if you feel like it. Uh, you get a little paint tube next to your name, bink. I hope you have a super day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you very, very soon with another video. Bye-bye.